I want to talk a little bit about Rumiko Takahashi. Uh, she is an absolute legend in Japan and really all over the world, creating amazing comics, uh, amazing manga, just a, a incredible uh, body of work and is probably, in my mind, probably one of the most influential people uh, in all of, of comics. And I, I say that for a number of reasons. I'll go into it. It's probably more of a, like a, just a, in my personal opinion video, more than a, like a historical bio, but I really recommend people learn about her, everything she's done and why she truly is a legend. And I am, let's go and talk a bit about that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I've used, I, I've mentioned Rumiko Takahashi and what uh, I, I've, I've used her, I've brought her up before. I've used her as an example of somebody who I think is, is a, a, just a legend in the, uh, in the industry who very few people know. Um, and when I say very few people, I mainly mean Western audiences. The, uh, of course, Japan, anyone who's followed manga knows that name. Um, Europe actually is quite familiar with uh, her work. And even South America, you go down there. But for whatever reason, um, the West, the U.S., has largely uh, ignored this creator. And, I mean, including to the point that, you know, she's finally been been recognized, you know, a, a bit more. Uh, she won some, uh, I believe, uh, uh, so the Eisner and, and some, some comic recognition. But very, very late. Um, this was like 2018, uh, she was inducted into the Eisner hall of fame and she was nominated, uh, three times before that and did not make it in. And it's, it's a crime. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous that, um, it's, it's been this long in putting her together. So, so first off, let me explain. So who is this and why, why does she matter? Well, um, she is, as I mentioned, uh, she is a, uh, Japanese, um, manga artist. And she got started in the, I believe the late seventies. Um, and, and she, you know, basically interned or, or, um, um, mentored, uh, learned, uh, from Kazo Kiyoki, the, uh, creator, author of Lone Wolf and Cub, which is another book that people probably know. Uh, but she, she basically gets started creating a number of stories. And I would describe her stories as kind of more, uh, humorous, light. It's what a lot of people call slice of life uh, today. And it's, so it's it's one of those areas where you, you know, you talk about uh, things like Scott Pilgrim uh, by Brian Lee O'Malley and, and books of that nature, um, including, I think, um, you know, uh, Smile and, and things that Raina Telmiger has done. If you read those books and you look at them, they owe a ton of influence to Rumiko Takahashi, who really kind of popularized this style. Now, right now, if you're wincing a little bit because you don't like Scott Pilgrim or you don't like Raina Telmiger, you like that kind of content, um, hold off for a moment because uh, Rumiko Takahashi it's, it's her work, and I, I know a lot of people who are not fond of modern-day slice of life who absolutely adore stuff like uh, Ranma One Half and um, Yurosi Yatsura and Maisa no Koko and, and several um, pretty incredible um, pieces uh, that, that she put together. It's, 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 in my mind, I, I say it this way. If you want to see the style at a kind of top of its game, pure level, Takahashi is what you want to, you want to go to. Uh, the stuff's funny. The stuff is very uh, descriptive and indicative of Japanese culture and what it means to kind of live in that area. It's also got good comedy. It's, it's excellent in terms of sequential art storytelling where a joke gets set up and then plays out uh, kind of in through the art and through the pages. And you just don't see that in a lot of other work. You see a lot of the, um, the stuff. And I, I think um, O'Malley does uh, perfectly fine work. I think a lot of the clones of his work are, are a lot less good. Um, but you see this, there's, there's an art and a, um, a professionalism about how to use sequential art to its, to its maximum potential. And I think Takahashi is, is absolutely ideal. Um, she's, she's an interesting case because the other piece 
And I don't want to go too far into this area, but when you think about um, somebody who, you know, we, we talk about female creators and the kind of struggles that some female creators have had in comics and getting recognition. And um, I'm always, uh, you know, that I'm always, I don't know, amused is a wrong word, but disappointed when Takahashi never comes up. Because keep in mind, this is somebody who began her career in the 70s, worked through the 80s, uh, got her work into Shonen Jump, and uh, or Weekly Shonen, I should say, and and really uh, became hugely successful um, as a woman working in Japan, where that that isn't the most ideal uh, place to go. I think a much harder climate. Now, granted, manga is is easier, but still not. I mean, this this it's not trivial. It's not easy to get uh, to get going there. She's got a net worth of seventy million dollars. She's got global distribution. She sold a ridiculous uh, amount of copies, and you know, I, I, it, 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 there's been just a, a ton of material that she's put out. I mean, Ranma One Half, which is pretty well known, ran for just under 10 years from the, the mid 80s to the, the mid 90s. Um, it has a circulation of 53 million uh, over 38 volumes. Um, she did uh, Unusia, which is uh, another one that's probably her second most popular at 45 million uh, copies in circulation. Uh, Rene is um is more recent and that one is is got three million uh copies but i mean she's got a career if you look at it i mean yureshi yatsura began in 1978 she's got a you know a, a, a manga out now called mao it's 2019 we're talking you know coming up on 50 years of steady content coming out and and really successful content coming out. Uh, Miyasan Okoko is uh, very, um, it, it's, it's definitely a, 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 I don't know, it's, it's, it's a personality book. Um, you know, uh, Yatsura, Rama One Half has fantasy elements of uh, people who kind of, you know, turn into animals and, and other things when water gets splashed on them. Yatsura is about an alien who comes to come to earth to conquer it and uh, falls in love with a human boy there after playing tag. I mean, th the stuff is, is light in the sense that you can have kids read it. You can enjoy it as an adult. And I think that it's a, I don't want to say it's like a gateway for me. When I first started looking at manga, uh, Yoroshi Yatsura was where I began and it taught me a lot about Japan. It taught me a lot about storytelling and it was, uh, it was just powerful, powerful material. And so today, as I see kind of slice of life, indie type comics, um, being more popular and, and pushed more, and a lot of people talking about, you know, doing groundbreaking or never seen before work. It's like, yeah, Takahashi was doing this back in, in the, in the early eighties was putting this stuff out weekly in a lot of cases. And I think there's a, there's a certain kind of story behind her her struggle um she she had a lot of difficulties meeting deadlines at the beginning um so she changed her 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 style and and kind of how she delivered until she got her kind of her her legs under her got her, her got her momentum going um she you know it, it was kind of a classic almost starving artist story she uh, lived in a very tiny apartment with a couple of assistants she slept in a closet uh in some cases and now, I mean, she's the uh, the godfather, godmother to uh, to manga. I think in a lot of cases, it's it's I, there's a lot of videos out there that go through her career and talk about kind of everything she's done and some of the the, the pieces she's put together. Uh, I wanted to throw this out there as just a, a quick kind of beginning video to to get this word out. Go check out Rumiko Takahashi. Um, you know, it, fortunately, whether you like more of a personality type story, uh, romantic comedy or science fiction or whatever else, there's, there's something for everyone in there, but I can't stress enough. The storytelling that would go on the, the, the page was, is, is second to none. And when you talk about kind of the legends in the industry, you talk about, you know, people like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, 
Um, those are those are really big names who did a lot of, of content and, and really put their life on the page and, and did amazing work. I think Rumiko Takahashi belongs in that level. I know there's some people in the West that just can't tolerate that, don't want to hear that, but uh, it's 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 a fact. Uh, she's produced thousands of pieces of material, um, many genres, uh, enabled so much business for for others, and is um, that you know the heart is on the page. Very very personable woman, um, very very clever. And so when you when you hear about like kind of the um, you know the, some of the uh, honoring some of the legendary female creators, make sure Rumiko Takahashi's name is on that list. And I, I would argue at the top of that list, I think definitely important, definitely important for Western audiences to know more of. And, um, and, and so that's my, my way of intro. I think I'll do another video at some point soon about kind of her work and kind of going into it a little bit more depth. But my guess is, and, and this always shocks me, is most people have never heard of this person. And I want to get this name out there. Her work is very easy to find. Um, you can, you can look at it and yeah, I mean, there's, there's, they've certainly made plenty of anime, uh, based off of it, but you can generally pick up something she's done anywhere very easily. And it's, uh, just pick up one book, go through it and, and just note the storytelling. And especially keep in mind that in the eighties and the nineties, she was using techniques that are just now starting to come into their own in 2020 here in the West. And uh, it's, it's just a cool little bit of stuff to know. So check it out. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if, if you if you've never heard of her and you do, let me know what you think. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if, of course, if you do know her, she's a legend. So any of your kind of favorite titles or what you like, uh, let me know that too. Uh, like, subscribe. You, you can dislike. Uh, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But don't you, you shouldn't dislike Takahashi. I mean, uh, there's, there's somebody... It's somebody you should like. I, I'm just saying. Uh, but anyway, m most importantly, hey, hey, thanks for listening.